Hello, welcome to my eighth vlog. I did two videos uh, recently, well, kind of three, um, but two of them pr proved not very popular, in which I did an unboxing of something. Apparently, people don't want to see things coming out of boxes. I thought that was YouTube was all about. So clearly, I was mistaken. And then I did another one about a, well, I guess it was also things coming out of boxes. It was um, a board game I found in a charity shop. That one was also not popular. So, note to self, never do that bit again. Back to the regular vloggy format. Oh, knocking the camera probably won't help focus. There we go. Uh, right, so... Um, it's going to be a little bit more amateurish this time because the tripod broke. Sorry Andy, I broke your tripod. Uh, I will buy a new one or replace it or repair it somehow. I'm not sure how to repair it though. Anyway, we're getting well past one minute in and I'm still waffling. Let's move the little Duplo brick number 8 out of the way and move some miniatures in to show you people. And by you people I mean all both of you who are watching this. Right, so, from the board game, the Hobbit board game, I got this uh, rather large wolf. And I have nothing to show what scale he is, so I'm going to do a jump cut. There you go, that's, that's how big he is, and that's how bad my lighting is. Yeah, here's um, a... 28 slash 30 millimeter scale thief what I put together and have mentioned in previous videos This is the character for my friend Mike And he comes up to just about around the wolf's jaw there and there is my Scale measury thing which I got from miniature heroes. I will provide links and stuff if I haven't already um, Meant to include this in more videos actually so yeah, this is going to be an absolutely monstrous, huge, uh, gigantic wolf uh, of the sort of uh, North, Mytho North, North mythology kind of thing. And um, yes, it's inspired, to, well, I'm inspired to have a wolf this big by the game Dragon's Dogma, which inspires me to do a lot of things. That's how big it is. Um, it fits rather nicely on uh, one of these uh, Citadel bases, which are quite good. So I'll um, be doing something with that base to make it look nice and painting the miniature sometime soon, I hope. There we go. Right. Off to one side, and I'm going to do another jump cut because I want to get another figure for the next bit. Look at me, I'm jump cutting all over the place. Right. This is the Link inspired elf figure. Uh, you've seen this in previous videos, although probably not previously in Focus. Uh, I discovered Focus only recently. There we go. This is uh, Trev's elf character. It's made of some bits I've mentioned before. I'm not going to waffle on about it in this video. I may do a waffling on about everyone's character miniatures, because uh, most of them are custom. Anyway, so, he's inspired by Link, and what does Link do? Link smashes pots. So I have made some pots for him to smash. Bring them in every time I move my arm round to pick something up, it ruins the lighting even further. These are made from beads that I got from Hobbycraft which is a, um, a big store that sells um, hobby type stuff. It's kind of an American style store, but it's in Britain, so it's nowhere near as good. Um, so you can't get the sort of stuff you see uh, DM Scotty picking up and making things out of. But uh, there's, there's some half decent stuff in there. But um, it's, it's not like you... I assume someone in America might see this at some stage. You might be thinking that Hobbycraft is something like Hobby Lobby or Michael's or whatever other stores DM Scotty's always mentioning. It, it's not quite that. It's it's all right though. Anyway, they sell these um, they sell these like a 
beads, you get a little tub, you fill it up with the beads you want, and then you pay a couple of pounds for them. Um, so these are made of such beads. Focus is about here. And, yep, so it's got a big kind of African-y style bead for the main body of the pot, and then just sort of um, little bead glued on top of that, and the whole thing is glued down to a base. And that's about it really. There's um, glued multiples onto bases to sort of bulk out the terrain a bit. I don't want a load of, load of little individual ones uh, floating around. So I've got sort of got a couple of individual ones like these. Um, these are on tiny 20mm bases. Then on some 25mm bases I've got two and then on these 30mm bases, those who are fond of maths will see three. So, yeah, that's how that works. And uh, if I really wanted to, if I had them smashing individual jugs, what I could do... Jugs? Jars? Pots? What are we calling them? Urns? Anyway, so I, I could have that down, and then Link comes along and he's like, Ah, I'm going to smash just that one, and I'd go, ah place for two and he smashes another one and then there we go we, he's, he's not actually called Link in the game we figured that would be going too far but yeah that, that's the idea that can happen or you know three can be smashed in one go it doesn't matter ah uh, uh, there he is in focus again and there's his friend the thief you can see sort of uh how big they are compared to each other and how bad my lighting is right so one final thing to show you uh, just passing the seven minute mark here let's move these out no jump cut this time plop 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 right these are not in focus I'm moving too close need to set up a little thing with um, sort of a point of this is where focus is on it so I can sort of judge these a bit better stage marks that could be a thing that happens uh, incidentally I'm filming on this uh, rather nice board that I did today um, which I would pick up the camera and show you but I'll screw up my focus entirely uh, but yeah this is nice I might go into um, how I did it another day these uh, are slimes, and if I hold this in this hand, lighting is not ruined. There we go. These are little slimes that I made, and these are made from their almond shells, glued down to bases that I um, had already added a bit of text to using some wallpaper, and basically painted them green and made them shiny. So yeah, don't don't leave your nutshells um, lying around on my game table after the game. I will pick them up and I will turn them into monsters. And um, they will eat you in the next session. Yep, little simple things. You can do this. Or you can just make them out of blobs of uh, green stuff or milliput or something. I just, um, just thought they made a good shape for that. So yep, yeah. bit of glue, bit of paint. Got yourself some slimes, I might make some different colour ones. Um, I can actually talk about painting because I have focus. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, added a little bit of texture in places using super glue. Just sort of blobbed on here and there, gives them a sort of... Uh, crusty spot kind of effect, you can see that. Uh, and around the edge. And as I was uh, dry brushing the highlights on, I just... I let them slip onto the base a bit intentionally because what it does is just about seeing the lighting here gives them a slight glowing effect um, which uh, kind of reminds the way the slimes are sometimes portrayed in certain computer games as slightly glowing. I might do some different colour ones because I'm uh, quite a fan of a game called Terraria and um, one of the main monsters in that is all different colour slimes I think they're all pretty much the same, like, stat-wise, but um, they're different colours. Of course, in D&D, &D, different colour slimes have different properties. 
So, just past the 10 minute mark there. That was the 8th one of my vlogs, and this is all the stuff that was in it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, but I imagine you don't, because these videos never get any comments, and I'm not really bothered by that. I'm not doing this for you, I'm doing this for me. Goodbye.